You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours, says Psalms 128.2. Good morning and welcome to Tandem Radio, the good news on business. This is your host, Glenn DeLaking, here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Bridge FM and also at TandemRadio.com, our website, where you can listen from anywhere on the globe. And we are the good news on business, bringing you insights uh, about God's Word and how it applies to your business life. Uh, we do two things here at the show. Number one is um, we do our best to point you to God's scripture and to help you understand that uh, God's word has plenty of insights uh, on how and uh, why and where and when to direct uh, business decisions and wisdom. And also we bring in special guests each week that will um, hopefully give us some golden nuggets of experience that they've gone through that can help us with our practical business come Monday morning that we can take it to work with us and use it. And uh, to that end, uh, each week God puts some scriptures on my heart that applies to the show. And we have a subtitle for the show. This week's show is Move Our Government is the theme of the show. And I'm excited to talk about that because uh, we have elections coming up and it's so important for us to get out there and vote that's the bottom line get out there and vote and hopefully you'll understand why by the time we're done with this show because today's guest is a very good friend of mine Mary Pat Angelini who's an assemblywoman here in New Jersey in the 11th district and um, she uh, also is very active in business as a CEO of, um, uh, of her company and uh, we have so much more to talk about with her in a second we'll be right to Mary Pat Angelini but first before we go there let's get back to our screen Scriptures. Today's scripture, 2 Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I left a little blank in there because if my people who are called by my name, I think a lot of people miss that. I think sometimes they take the scripture and say, well, if everybody will just pray, we'll be okay. But the scripture actually says, if my people, that's God speaking, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I know many of you are listening are thinking, you know what, our land needs healing for sure, especially over some of the things that have gone on over the last decade. And we really need some peace and love brought back into what we're doing here. And God, what does God tell us to do about that? To pray to Him about it and get on it and He'll heal our land. With that said, I want to introduce our guest this morning. It's Mary Pat Angelini, who's again uh, Assemblywoman from the 11th District here in New Jersey. And she's also the CEO of Preferred Behavioral Health Group. Mary Pat, welcome. It's good to have you back again. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, no problem. It's always good to see you. Why don't you, I know you were on a few weeks ago. Why don't you just remind our audience one more time uh, a little bit about yourself? Eight. So Thank I'm you. serving my fourth term, uh, the assembly term, uh, it's two years each. Okay. And uh, I sit on the Health and Senior Services Committee in the assembly, as well as the Human Services Committee. And um, as you mentioned, my, my day job is uh, um, CEO of Preferred Behavioral Health Group, which is a um, uh, community mental health agency that's served the Ocean County primarily for a number of years. Um, we've just brought Monmouth County into the fold as well through Prevention First, which is our substance abuse prevention mm -hmm. side of things. And uh, I'm a mom, a grandmom of three, <laughs> and uh, pretty busy these days. Uh, I hear you, I hear you. Now, before we flip into the government role that you, you have, because we're going to talk today about Move Our Government, what's it like to be CEO of a company like Preferred Behavioral Health Group? Well, it's, it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of moving parts. Um, I have uh, close to 400 employees, so that's a lot of responsibility. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, my job as CEO, I feel, is to really to um, make sure that everything is running as efficiently as it can be. We're a private nonprofit organization, so the the public trust has to be there. Right. Um, we accept donations. Um, we have government grants and uh, from all levels, uh, municipal state, county, um, federal grants, mm -hmm. um, but fundraising is, is always tough, so right. we need to be the best that we can be primarily for the people that we serve. Um, we have outpatient programs, we have um, uh, partial care programs for those chronic mentally ill, we have um, a housing component, as well as the um, prevention mm -hmm. that I mentioned, prevention now, programs. Now, how do you find the time to CEO a company, right, and also 
um, be an assembly woman because obviously you're doing a lot of work all over the place. How does that work out? Right. Well, in New Jersey, the legislature is actually considered part time. Mm. So um, that was one of the, the good pieces of information mm. that I found that once I got involved because that really was my concern. How could I do both right. when I was thinking about running in 2007? And um, so we're usually in Trenton about one day a month for a voting session, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much, you know, a large chunk of the day. Um, committees meet on different days, and that's usually, you know, um, half a day in Trenton. Um, I have the luxury, obviously, of being the CEO. I can, you know, arrange my hours and, you know, right. get the work done, um, not necessarily between 9 and 5. Right. But the bulk of what I do in uh, for my connected to my legislative position is being out in the community, out in my district. Mm -hmm. um, I represent 17 municipalities in uh, central Monmouth County and there is, uh, there's never a, uh, never a lack of <laughs> activities out there. And it's, it, that's my job, is to be out there, to be the face, um, to let people see who is representing them in Trenton. And I think that that's very important. I think that people, um, my constituents, appreciate that when I show up. Um, just this morning, I was at a uh, a walk for um, ovarian cancer. Mm, wow. So I do a lot of community um, events such as those. So you're doing a lot of running. You're all over the place. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of lot of chicken dinners. That's why I yeah, there you I, I chicken went up a, uh, a few dress sizes since uh, last morning. <laughs> you still look great. You still look great. Well, let's get into the whole idea that we have today and why this came to my heart, move our government. And the real question I have for you today is, can myself, can any one of the people listening, can a business owner have an impact on moving our government today? It just seems, I, I run into so many people today and, and we see by the polls, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't come out, a lot of people who should come out don't right. come out. That kind of frustrates me, I'm sure it frustrates mm -hmm. you as well. But the point is, can we make a difference? Does it really make a difference? Oh, it absolutely does. And I have to tell you, I, I am so frustrated and so, I just don't understand yeah. why people don't vote right. in, in higher uh, numbers. Um, you look at a presidential year versus uh, next year when I run, right. um, the assembly will be at the top of the ticket. Yeah. So that's naturally going to be a very low turnout. Yeah. In other words, people will show up to vote for a president, they'll show up to vote for a governor, right. but they <laughs> most likely um, won't turn out to vote for their assembly person. And actually, you know, in the assembly being in the lower house, we're, we're closest to the people. So right. we run every two years. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very, it's very, very frustrating. And, you know, I'll argue politics or, you know, political views with, with anyone, but once I find out that they don't vote, right. <laughs> I walk away. I, re I really do. I, I'm very impatient when it comes to that. Yeah. I mean, it's a responsibility. And, and sure. uh, I mean, you know, God gives us a command in Scripture, in many parts of Scripture, to be involved, to be, uh, you know, listen to authority, to work with authority, to support our government. And, um, uh, but yet, you know, people give up or abdicate that uh, right and privilege mm -hmm. uh, that they have, and it's always shocking to me. So going back to the question, um, you know, obviously why vote is so important, but can a few handful of people make a big difference? Sure. I mean, there have been issues that, you know, have been brought to my attention that I didn't know about. I mean, I think a part of being a good legislator is to, to listen, to, you know, open your door and listen to the issues. Um, that's, you know, I'll sit down with anyone, mm. you know, even if I know that I'm, I'm not going to agree with them. Right. Um, you know, not that I, you know, don't have an open mind, but right. there are some issues that are just core to my belief that, mm. that I'm not going to agree with. But I, you know, it's, we can agree to disagree. <laughs> um, and, uh, but uh, businesses in particular, I mean, there are, in New Jersey in particular, there are so many regulations that are just, you know, really um, tying the hands of, of small businesses. Right. Um, and that's something that we're really trying to take a very strong look at, particularly under Governor Christie's administration to, um, to you know, release some of these regulations right. so the businesses can do what they do best. Mm. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of uh, those types of problems that I hear about. 
Um, but again, if anyone's listening and they have a suggestion right. or an idea of how, particularly around businesses, um, that things could work better in New Jersey, please give me a call. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to speak to, if you're not sure who your legislator is, you can give me a call and I'll be happy to uh, put you in touch with your legislator. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I have been pleasantly surprised at uh, our legislators that have been so willing, like yourself, like Chris Smith, and people like that, who you can really reach out to, mm -hmm. and they will take it to heart. And it's kind of funny, because I remember when my youngest son was just turned 18 for voting, he had wrote, written a letter to Chris Smith mm -hmm. uh, about something, I don't even remember what the issue was, to be honest with you, and just, out of, he never even told me, he got this letter. And he was so excited because he got a letter back. Right. And it actually addressed the issue. It wasn't like a, you know, <laughs> exactly. kind of a form letter. And he, he said, Dad, you know what? I'm going to vote for this guy for the rest of my life. He said, because he, he really, really, he responded to my letter. Mm -hmm. he, helped, he answered my question. He helped me. So my point is that, um, you know, your legislators do need to hear from you. And if you're sitting out there and you're a business owner or even you're not a business owner, you're whatever, and you're just frustrated about what's going on in government, which I know many Christians today especially are frustrated about what's going on in government, you need to go out there and speak up and get to your legislator. So we have a, a, an election coming up, and um, it's important for people to get out there and vote. Um, how do people get people to vote? I mean, is there something that, uh, a button that people push? Is there something that uh, gets people excited about going to vote? Or is it just a matter of if they're a member or not? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I know I've seen it both cases. Um, certainly, you know, voting has been ingrained in me from, from my parents. Um, so it's always been, it's always just been a part of, mm. of myself. And hopefully I've passed that on to my children and, and grandchildren. And, um, but then you do see situations where a particular issue will come up and it will get people involved. You hear that lots of times at the uh, municipality level. Right. And, and people will get involved with uh, a, you know, a local issue. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they say, uh, I think it was Tip O'Neill said, all, all politics are local. Mm -hmm. um, and it's true. Right. Um, but um, it's, it's just very important. And, and people need to talk to each mm -hmm. other about, you know, don't forget to vote. Don't, right. you know. Um, I always tell people, even, you know, people have come up to me and they say, you know, well, I'm not going to vote for you because, you know, I'm of the other party. And, uh, you know, I said, that's fine as long as you vote. Right. I, I, I really say Get the that. buzz out. Yeah. yeah. You, it's, you know, and now they're, you know, they're talking about possibly doing uh, online voting and that that scares me a yeah, little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think there's, uh, you know, too much room for uh, funny business. Yeah, there. absolutely. <laughs> I hear you. One last question, we're back to wrapping it up and uh, we're, we're right at the end of this segment. I know, like, you wrote an article recently about marijuana. You took a lot of heat for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm shocked sometimes what people say about politicians on both sides. You know, it's amazing. How does your faith impact you in that? I mean, how, how does that sustain you through all this? I know you believe, in it, and mm -hmm. I'm just curious when that hits you. Well, you know, it's, again, I know in my heart of hearts that I'm doing the right thing, or I'm, you know, I'm standing up for what I believe in, right. and certainly, you know, God gives me that strength to, uh, to keep doing that. Um, there have been times, there absolutely have been times where I've just been, you know, uh, struggling with an issue, and trust me, I, I have... Uh, I talk to God all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, because he's the one who sustains us. Mary Pat, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, we're through the segment already. You're listening to Tandem Radio. This is your host, Glenn DeLake. You're here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern.